this video, a 72-year-old diabetic CKD stage 4 patient had a huge improvement in his kidney function just as soon as a confident doctor started to treat him. He was able to improve thanks to two new medications, a detoxifier and a prescription supplement. Question, is CKD actually not reversible or is your doctor just not good enough? This is what we will find out today. Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and what I want to share with you today is what a very interesting study from Japan just found out. This study is about a CKD patient that was not doing well at all. We are talking a stage 4 CKD patient with diabetes with a rate of kidney function decline that we could define, well, I don't know, these graphs. These graphs tell us enough, I would say. And guys, keep in mind that this patient was actually taking most of the medications that are usually recommended for a case like this. Yeah, this is a pretty long list of medications, isn't it? But even if this man was receiving a treatment most doctors would consider more than adequate, his skinny function was looking like this at this point. Now, what most doctors would have said to a 72-year-old man in these conditions would be something like, hey, you had a good run, Grams, but it's time for dialysis now. But not in this case. Because, you see, in Japan, doctors are trained to really hate dialysis. It has to do with the huge amount of money it costs to the healthcare system. So, the doctor that was taking care of this patient decided to have a team of multidisciplinary specialists look at his case. And this is what happened. And all this thanks to two new medications, a detoxifier and a prescription supplement. Okay, okay, I know what you may be thinking at this point. Catherine, we have seen this a million times already. The 72-year-old man was taught how to follow a proper plant-based renal diet. He improved immediately and everyone lived happily ever after. But guys, no, 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 no. This is not what happened here. This case is different. This case is interesting because it doesn't involve lifestyle changes at all. No nutritional counseling, no fancy plant-based diet, no six o'clock morning runs for this patient. Just good old medications and supplements. So yeah, this is why I'm showing you this case report today. This is Frankly, one of the first case reports I have ever seen in which a patient in an advanced stage of kidney disease improved without completely changing their diet and lifestyle. Actually, this is an obese man with type 2 diabetes, aka the best candidate ever for a plant-based diet. But this patient wasn't put on a diet, just two medications, one detoxifier and one supplement. Let's see what they are and let's see if they can help you as well, starting with Phenarinone. So let's talk about Phenarinone, which is sold in the US under the name Kerendia. What's remarkable about this medication is that it can lower proteinuria levels drastically in patients with diabetes and CKD. In fact, if you are started on it, reduction of more than 30% in proteinuria is to be expected. And get this, substantial reduction in proteinuria levels may make all the difference between keeping losing kidney function over time and seeing an improvement. I mean, this is exactly what happened to the 72-year-old patient this video is all about. So a question for those of you with diabetes. Has your doctor mentioned phenarinone to you? Because as we have seen, it can make a difference for patients with diabetes. Actually, guys, probably we will start using phenarinone in patients without diabetes as well in the future. 
It may really help with glomerulonephritis such as IgA nephropathy and as we can see, there is a huge trial going on right now to test this drug in CKD patients without diabetes. I will keep an eye on it as we are going to get the results in about one year. Now moving on, the second innovative medication they used here is called the Tinrad, so does Uretect in Japan. This is a medication for high uric acid level and gout. And I want to ask you if your doctor mentioned this because this medication is not approved in the US nor in Europe as of today, which is a shame because according to the case report we are examining today, and I quote here, the Tinerad might suppress progression of CKD. So these are the two main reasons this patient improved, according to the authors of the case report, Finerinone and Dutinurad. Now, as I was saying, Dutinurad is a novel treatment for high uric acid and gout, a severely underestimated problem in CKD patients. I still see patients today that are not diagnosed with gout and that are told by their doctors that the joint pain they feel is just arthritis. No, I'm not kidding. This happened to more than one of my patients. And what happens if you have undiagnosed hyperuricemia or high uric acid levels is that your kidneys will be damaged. Yes, untreated high uric acid level doesn't just make your life hell. It also causes kidney damage. By the way, guys, even if we don't have the Tinorad in the US today, we still have ways to deal with high uric acid levels. First of all, make sure you are being tested for uric acid and then if needed, get treatment. The way I deal with this issue today is by recommending allopurinol in combination with a low purine diet and with cherry extract. This is what I call a holistic approach. And don't get me wrong, this approach works. In fact, high uric acid levels and gout are caused by purines that we mostly get from meat, especially organ meat, fish, especially shellfish, but also sweetened beverages and alcoholic beverages. When we remove this from the diet, uric acid levels usually improve and this will also protect the kidneys. So, if I wasn't clear enough about this until now, make sure none of the causes and complications of CKD go untreated. There are medications that can make a huge difference in slowing down CKD as much as possible. I mean, if your doctor is competent enough to identify and treat the complications you may have, that's it. Speaking of which, let's talk about one of the supplements that made it possible for the 72-year-old stage 4 patient to improve. This is something that apparently terrifies some doctors more than a Wi-Fi outage during a Zoom conference. Yeah, you guess it. It's sodium bicarbonate. Some doctors still react to the idea of prescribing it like you just ask them to inject you with Windex. Oh no, we can't possibly give you a kitchen ingredient. What's next? Aspirin made from willow bark? Honey for a sore throat? Madness! And yet, this supplement can make a huge difference in slowing down CKD progression. I mean, it really saved the 72-year-old from the dialysis. There is no way he could have improved without it. And yet, the authors of the study wrote a brief essay to justify the use of this supplement. Now, in my opinion, this wasn't necessary at all. It's a well-documented fact that sodium bicarbonate works. It treats metabolic acidosis. And look, if your doctor is competent, and I mean competent enough to navigate a revolving door without incident, then they'll know how to spot and treat complications like metabolic acidosis. And let me tell you, that is not something you just wait and see with. Metabolic acidosis is your body's way of saying, congratulations, your kidneys are now dissolving you from the inside. But yeah, this is why the 72-year-old stage 4 CKD patient from this paper improved while many other patients can't. Because researchers still today need to write a full paragraph just to justify prescribing a perfectly normal treatment to a CKD patient. 
So please, doctors, stop being scared of sodium bicarbonate. It's not going to open a portal to the underworld. It's going to help your patients not to die. By the way, guys, if you are not sure if you need sodium bicarbonate or not, I have recently made a very comprehensive video about it. It's up here and in this video, you will find a complete guide about how to take it, the dosages, the symptoms and the test to look for and more. Now, guys, I will show you what detoxifier they use in order to make this patient improve in a minute. Before that, a very important question. Is this case report? proof that CKD patients can improve as long as they receive the right treatment. Now guys, before I show you the supplement they use, full disclosure here, I have identified a crucial gap in the paper. So, what we are examining today is the case report of a diabetic obese patient that had a significant improvement in his kidney function with a new, more targeted approach to CKD treatment. So, what we are examining today is the case report of a diabetic obese patient that had a significant improvement in his kidney function with a new, more targeted approach to CKD treatment. This patient was rapidly reaching stage 5 before the intervention. But then, thanks to better medications, he started to improve his kidney function. No more risking dialysis, no more painful symptoms of advanced CKD. Even more notably, his BUN dropped after the start of the intervention and his proteinuria dropped as well. And guys, his proteinuria was bad. Very bad before the intervention. Usually, a patient would have been told to think about dialysis very seriously at this point, but everything changed with the new medications this patient was started on. So, is this proof that there are indeed medications that could prevent every single CKD patient from ending up in dialysis and the only problem are incompetent doctors? Well guys, it could look this way reading this study, but as I was saying, there is a crucial gap in this paper. They never mention dietary and lifestyle modifications. They never mention if the patient reduced his protein intake or if he made a dietary changes in order to control diabetes. And guys, omitting this fact in the study is a pretty big flow because you see, a drop in BUN and proteinuria is exactly what I see every time I put a patient on a low-protein, plant-based diet. And by the way, there is a ton of medical literature supporting the notion that you can lower your BUN and proteinuria with the diet. But there is no literature supporting the notion that you can improve with phenarenone and bicarbonate. These are only considered a way to slow down CKD, not to improve your GFR. So, are CKD patients going to finally be able to improve without completely changing their diet? Or is this just too good to be true? Well, only time will tell. By the way, I'm not accusing the researchers of cheating in this study, right? But they should have at least mention if this patient changed their dietary habit in the paper or if he kept them the same. They never addressed this issue and I consider this a limitation. Now guys, there is another crucial part of this patient's treatment that could in theory explain his improvement in BUN and proteinuria because and please remember this, BUN and proteinuria levels are the two main indicators of the amount of toxins a patient is getting from protein. They always go down when a patient reduces their protein intake, all right? And when you are able to reduce your BUN and proteinuria significantly enough, your kidney function is going to improve. This is what the renal diet is for. But according to the study we are examining today, it is also possible to achieve a reduction in uremic toxins by using a powerful detoxifier. In fact, there are substances we can use to bind to the toxins produced by protein metabolism, protecting the kidneys. What they use in this study is a common medication 
in Japan, a spherical absorbent called AST120 or cremazine. Now, AST120 is just like your regular activated charcoal, the only difference being that it's spherical. As you can clearly see, but why is it spherical, you ask? Because activated charcoal is amazing at removing toxins. This is even used in the emergency treatment of certain kinds of poisoning and intoxications. It's like the vacuum cleaner of the digestive tract. It removes everything from the digestive tract, including medications, vitamins, and other essential nutrients. So you see where I'm going with this? Activated charcoal works, but it works a bit too much. And that's why they made AST120 spherical. Its shape makes it bind to uremic toxins only, leaving precious nutrients alone. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? I mean, a medication that is made just to make sure toxins don't damage your kidneys. And well, it is too good to be true. Unfortunately, AST120 is not approved in Europe or in the US. Oh, damn it, Japan, why are you always giving all the best treatments for yourself? Now, guys, we do have some alternatives to AST120 in the US and Europe that might be just as effective. If you want to learn more about them, watch my video up here. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye-bye.